jingle bells jingle all the way Oh what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way Oh what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh Yeah, I took the wrong chord there, but anyways we're going to create an advent calendar in this tutorial. It's going to be so much fun. So stay tuned. All right. In this tutorial, we're going to build this advent calendar and we're going to build it with React. And I'm also using style components with this one. And I store the data in local storage. So if you, for example, open a hatch here, I don't actually know if the English word is hatch for this one when it's an advent calendar, but I'm going to call it a hatch that you can open and close. And I store it in local storage, so it will persist when you reload the page and has opened the hatch, or many of them, of course. So this is the end product when finishing this tutorial. Okay, uh, and I'm using images from Unsplash for this one. That's why I provided you with a link to my GitHub where you can download some starter files. And it's basically just a Create React app installation where I also installed style components and I provided all these images for you so you don't have to download them yourself. Otherwise, if you're going to build it yourself, you have to download all the images, one background image and 24 for the different hatches and also one that you have for the background here where the text is. And this text is just <laughs> some bad one-liner jokes about Christmas that I found on a web page. Uh, I also link to that web page in the code. So we're going to check that out later. So this is what it looks like when you start up the starter files. You have two folders there. You have one that says start here, and that's the one you're going to use. And then you have one folder with the finished application if you want to check it out before you start. Just going to have my daily coffee here. All right, so let's begin. Let's go inside of the code editor and check out what we've got here. So in these starter files, I have this uh, just an index file that will have an uh, app component. And for this one, it's uh, just typing out advent calendar for now. And also I provided you with a helpers.js file. And inside of here, I found this uh, kind of shuffle function. Just Google it and found it on Stack Overflow. Instead of doing it myself, I was a little bit lazy there. So this one is going to shuffle all the hatches for the calendar. And also I have this um, array here with all the hatches because I provided you with images and those images are placed in the IMG folder in the public. So you have all the hatches here and also the background for the calendar. So that's the images. Uh, and I set it up in this array here. So I just uh, give each hatch an ID and a number. I have the URL to the image here and the text. And these ones are the bad one-liners that I found at this website here. So I'm using this one to yeah, make it a little bit funny. So you can, of course, have whatever you want here. And I also set the open to false in this ones. And this way we know when it's in the state later, we know it if uh, the hatch is open or close. So I set every one of them to false to start with. Okay, and we're actually just going to need two components for this one. And that's just one thing that's so great with React because we create one hatch component and we can reuse that for all the 24 hatches. And we just have our app component also where we're going to put mostly all of the logic. And in the package.json file, you can see that I installed style components also. And that's the one dependency that I use here. And first I thought that I'm not going to show you the CSS for this one. Yeah. But well, then I changed my mind. I'm going to show you how to create the CSS also in this one. But first we're going to scaffold out our components. So inside the app component, we're going to need use state and use effect for this one. So we can import them there. Then we're going to import something that's called create global style from style components. And this is just like it sounds. It will make it possible for us to create the global styling for the application. I'll show you this in a second. And then we're going to import create calendar from dot forward slash helpers. 
And this one is just a little function that I created down here that we just call to get uh, our shuffled hatches. So I'm just exporting this one here and it will send our hatch array up to the shuffle function and give us yeah, a new calendar because we want to shuffle all the hatches when we create a new calendar. That's the create calendar. We will import uh, more stuff here later. Okay, so inside our app, we can create a state. We have our hatches and set hatches. And as you can see, as always, I'm using hooks. I always use hooks. I never use classes anymore. Use state. And for now, we're just going to call our create calendar. And we can just console log hatches. Let's see what we've got. So we save this one, we inspect this one, and inside our console we can see that we have an array with all the hatches and that's great. And you can also see that, that they are shuffled now. That's also great. We know that we have our hatches in the state. Back to the code editor, and we can create a new component. So inside the source folder, create a new file and call it hatch. .js. We create a new functional component, call it hatch. And if you wonder what I did there, I have this little nice snippet in Visual Studio Code where I just can type fc and this will create a functional component for me. So that's what I did here. And for now, this is it. I'm going to change this in a second. So go back to your app.js file and we can map through our hatches. So hatches.map. We have a hatch, and for now we can just have a hatch component there. Of course, we have to import it also. Import hatch from dot forward slash hatch. So what we're doing here, we take our hatches that we got in the state, and we map through them here and create a hatch component for each of the hatches. So we save this one, and as you can see, we have. 24 hatch components here now, and that's great. And of course, we should also have a unique key for this one. So back inside of our code editor, we can just put a key and we can grab the hatch.id. And it won't complain anymore, that's great. And it's in the helpers here, you can see that I have this ID here set up. So this is unique for every hatch. Okay. And we are going to send in some props to this hatch component. I'm going to give it the hatch data. And I just send in the hatch. So we send in the complete object here because we're going to use all of the properties from that one. Then we're going to have a handle click prop later on. And we can just create this one handle click. Handle flip hatch. Yeah, don't know if the naming is perfect there, but anyways. And we can create this function here, handle flip hatch. This one is going to take in an ID. And for now we can just console log the ID. We can also remove this console log up here, save it. Go back inside of our hatch component. And we have some props here. So we destructure out the props. We have our hatch data and we have to destructure this one also because hatch data is an object and we can do that with a colon and new curly braces. And we have the ID, the number, the text, the IMG and open. That's all our properties in that object. And then after that one, we have our handle click. Yeah, it's getting quite long here. All right. Hope you can see it here. And then we're going to create parentheses. Can remove this one. And inside of the parentheses, for now, we can just create a fragment. We're going to create a style component here in a second. Inside of there, we have a div with a class name of 
here we have to set different class names depending on if the hatch is open or closed. And we can do that with a turner operator. So we check if it's open. If it's open, we can set the class to front and open. If it's not open, we just set it to front. And inside of here, this is the front. So we're going to have a P tag and just display the number. So that's our front. We can just copy this one. And we rename this one. If this one is open, this is going to be the back that is open. And it's going to be named back if it's not open. So we have two classes. We just assign a class called open when this hatch is open. And there we can style it to flip around. And this one is going to have the text. So for now, this is it. As you can see, we have the different hatches here. But it looks like crap now, so we have to do some styling here. And we're going to use CSS Grid to style this to our likings. Yeah, back to the code. First, we can create a styles for the app component itself. So inside a source, we can create a new file that's called appstyles.js. I like to separate out my styles in uh, their own file. Some just uh, write them up here in uh, the component itself, but I like to have them in an own file and just import them in the component. Make sure you're in the appstyles.js file and import style from style components. Then we export const. We're going to call our styled component style app equals styled dot div this is a div that we create here and we have backticks because this is a template literal we can just type in our css inside of here the app is going to display as a grid we have display display like that all right then we have a grid gap we set that to 20 pixels this is the space between the cells in the grid all right, then we're going to set grid dash template dash columns. And this is really neat actually, because here we can make it responsive with just one line. So we use repeat. This one will repeat everything inside of this for each column. We set it to autofill. And I actually have another video in my YouTube channel where I explain this for you, how to create a grid like this. So I won't go into very detailed stuff here. So you can check that video out if you're unsure what I'm doing here. I set the min and max to 200 pixels. So the min width we allow our column to be is 200 pixels. And the max width is going to be one fragment. And this one will create a responsive grid for us. All right, we set the padding to 40 pixels. And this is it. This is all the styling we need for our app component. We just have to import it and use it in the app component itself. So somewhere here, maybe we import styled app from dot forward slash app styles. Uh, and now we can just use it here somewhere down below here. We use our styled app here. Make sure to cut this out here and just below here, paste it in. Do some auto formatting. So now we have some kind of grid here, but <laughs> we haven't styled our cards or hatches yet. But as you can see here, it will be responsive. And that's really neat. Back inside of the code editor, we can actually create the global styling also for our app as we're already in here. So we create our global style and this one I'm going to put in the component itself. So I haven't created a separate file for this one. So const global style equals to create global style. We're calling this one that we import here. And we have backticks because this is a template literal again. And we can just set our styling inside of here. And on the body, we're going to have our background. 
And I'm going to set this background image here, and I'm doing it in one line. You could, of course, also do it on uh, multiple rows here. So you set, set the background image and the background size, but I do it in one line here. So you can do that with center, forward slash. We want it to cover, and then we have the URL. And this one we can grab from dot forward slash IMD, and it's called calendar backdrop. Dot jpg and this is the one that I showed you in the public folder it's up here calendar backdrop and I have to put the images in the public folder because this one is going to be transpiled down and be run in the public folder and imported from the index.html file so that's why I put them in the img folder in the public folder Otherwise, it won't find them. Okay, then I also want to set the margin to zero. And that's it for our global styling. We just have to use this one. And it's really easy, actually. Just below here, we can just use our global style component. And this should apply the global styles for us. You can see we have our background here and it will scale nicely as we set it to cover and that's great. Then we can create the styles for the hatches and as I said I don't I'm not sure if it's called hatches so yeah make sure to give me a comment down below the video if it's not called that. I really want to know what you call these ones in an advent calendar. I made some googling but I couldn't find it actually. All right, inside the SRC folder, our source folder, create a new file that's called Hatch Styles, capital H, capital S, and .js. And this one is going to be a little bit more CSS to make this work. So first import styled from style components. And then for this one, I'm going to import the Hatch backdrop I actually put this one in the, this SRC image for this one. And I did that because then I can import it like this and use it in the style components very easily. And that's great with style components because you can use different stuff just like in regular JavaScript. I'll show you that in a second and it will be more clear to you why I did like this. I import it from dot forward slash img forward slash hatch underscore backdrop dot jpg. Okay, so that's our image. Then we create our style component, export const. It's important that we export it because we're going to import it in our hatch component later. We call it styled hatch equals styled.div backticks. And then we can type out our CSS inside of here. If we just take a quick look inside of our hatch component, you can see that this one is going to be our styled hatch that's going to wrap everything here. And then we have two divs, one that's called front and one that's called back. So inside our, our hatch styles, we first create this kind of wrapper that's called styled hatch. And inside of this one, we're also going to style the front and back divs. So for the wrapper, we're going to set the padding dash top to 100%. And this one is actually a little bit tricky because we want perfect squares. And you can do that by setting the padding top to 100%. This one is actually based on the width of the container. So when we set the padding to top, it's going to check the width of the element. So if the width is 200 pixels, it's going to set the padding top to 200 pixels as we set it to 100%. And that will make it a perfect square. It's really strange, I know, because it's based on the width, but that's how this uh, stuff works in CSS. All right. Then we're going to have a position to relative. And we can set the cursor to a pointer. So we have that nice little hand when we hover over our hatch. All right. Then we can nest this one. We have our front div. As we reinstall components, it works almost like SAS. You can nest stuff inside of it. So we can just nest it like this. For this one, or front, we set our background, and just as before, I set it to center, forward slash, cover, I have the URL, 
And for this one, we're going to send in a prop to our style component where we give it the background for the hatch as we have different backgrounds for each hatch. This one is going to change dynamically. As we're in a template literal here, we can grab the props with a dollar sign, curly braces, props, fat error, and props dot. We're going to call it background. Okay. This one is going to be absolute positioned. Absolute. I set the top to zero and left to zero and also set the set index to two. All right. And then inside of this one, we also have our P tag and I can nest that one inside of these curly braces inside of this div here. So we just type P and create new curly braces. And I, I really, really love this one with style components to do this nesting because it makes it so much clearer what belongs to what inside of here. Okay, so our P tag is going to be display flex align items to center and also justify content to center. And this one will make sure that our number will be displayed at the center of this one. We set the font family to dancing script. And this is just a font that I imported in the index.html file. And it's a Google font. So that's why I can use it here. I just imported it with a script tag in the index.html. I can actually show you that one. It's in public and in index.html. And I import that font here. So that's why I can use it in my styles. Back to the hatch styles. I set the color to white. Remove this one so we get a little bit more space. Padding 20 pixels. The width is going to be 50%. The height is going to be 50%. I set the border radius to 50 pixel, 50%. And this one is going to be this uh, transparent black circle in the background of the number, if you remember what I showed you before we started this tutorial. And I set the background to RGBA. Zero, 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 and 0 0.7. And of course, you can set whatever colors and transparency you want here. I set the font weight to 700 and the font size to 4 REM. All right. So this is our P tag. And then if you remember inside of the hatch component, we assign this new class that's called open when uh, it says that it should be open. So we have to style this one also. So inside our hatch styles, go back there. We can create an ampersand dot open like that. And when it's open, we just simply transform and rotate Y 180 degrees. And this will make sure that it uh, flips around. So that's our front. We have to create our back also. So just below back. And be really observant here where you put uh, everything uh, because this one ends here. That's our front that ends here. So we don't put our back inside of the front. That's very important. Otherwise it won't work. So this one should go below this curly brace here. And as you can see in my Visual Studio code, I have this uh, little plugin that will uh, give them different colors depending on how deeply nested they are. And that's actually quite good because it's easier to see what bracket belongs to what bracket. So our back is also going to be absolute positioned. Position. Absolute. We set our background for this one. Center forward slash cover. And we have the URL. And for this one, we have a dollar sign and curly braces. And we grab our hatch backdrop that we imported up here. And this one is going to be the same on all of the hatches. So that's why I could just put it in this image folder here 
and just import it because it's the same image. We don't have to change it dynamically with props like we do up here. Because this one, this link, we are getting from the object itself that holds the hatches. So that's why I can't just import it. Well, I could do that. I could import 24 different imports here, but that's not uh, very practical. So that's why I did it this way. This one is just one. So that makes sense to import it like I did at the top. All right, this one is also going to be positioned at the top, zero pixels, left zero pixels. Set index is going to be set to one. And as you can see here, I set the set index to one on this one, and I set it to two on this one, and they are absolute position. So this means that they are placed stacked on each other. And as the front have a set index of two, it's going to be shown, and the other one is going to be hidden. And on the back, we also transform it. Rotate Y. Don't know why it add this stuff here. I don't want that. We rotate it on the Y axis, 180 degrees. We also have the open class on this one. So ampersand dot open. Then when it's open, we set the send in the set index to two. And as you can see up here on open, as we set a set index to two here, this one will stack over the other one. We can actually set it to three because the other one has two. I don't think it matters. And we're going to transform it back to its original position, rotate Y and zero degrees. Don't know if you need to have the deg there. Maybe it's just enough to have a zero. Okay. Then we have the P tag for this one. We have a font family of dancing script and cursive. All right. We set the color to white. As you can see, I do the exact same styling here. You could, of course, create a more general styling for this one. But I did this if you want to change everything individually. So maybe you want a different color on the P tag on the front and you want another color on the back. So that's why I create a kind of redundant CSS code here now. Padding 10 pixels. We have a font size of 1.4 REM. This one is going to be the text. So I'm setting this font size to yeah, not that big because we have to make room for all the text. And we're going to text align center. We have a little bit more CSS to do than we'll be finished here. Um, it's not that fun creating CSS actually. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so below here, we have to do some general styling on the divs also, that's in the grid. So we have a forward angle bracket and div. This will make sure that we style all the divs that's inside of the grid. It's going to display as flex. And align items to sender and justify content to sender. These three rows here are really good to know because with these ones you can center everything in a div. So I use this a lot. Width is going to be 100%. The height is going to be 100%. And we set the transition, and this one is the one that makes um, that makes uh, things rotate with a smooth animation. So I set it to all and 0 0.5 seconds. You can actually just do it like this. Transform dash style, preserve 3D. I actually don't know if this one is needed. I think it will work anyway. Border dash radius. 20 pixels, and we set the border to one pixel, solid, and white. And the box sizing is going to be border box. And this should be it. Do a little bit of auto formatting. <laughs> it put that zero there when I auto formatting it. Yeah, save this one, and we can just import this one inside of our hatch component. Import 
styled hatch from dot forward slash hatch styles. And we can just change this fragment here to be the styled hatch instead. And we save it and hope that it will work. And as you can see, it seems like it's working. We have this nice little grid here, but we are only showing the numbers. We're not showing the image that should be at the front because now we can see through this and we see all the text here. And that's why we haven't sent in this prop to our styled hatch. We have this image on each hatch that we send in here. And I set up a background prop in my style component. So I just send in the image and save it. And as you can see now, it has created all these images here on the hatches and it looks great. It won't work now. And that's functionality that we're going to create next. So we can first set a click handler on this one. On click equals to, we have an inline arrow function as we're going to send in an argument to this one. Handle click, that's our prop that we sent into this component. And we send along the ID. That way we know what hatch we have clicked. We save it. We can see if we get something in our console here. Yeah, you can see when we click here, it says hatch 19, it says hatch 21, 15, 24. So that's great. We now can identify what hatch we have clicked. All right, so this is everything we need to do in our hatch component and also the styling for that one. So we have a little bit of work left to do in our app component where we're going to put all the logic for this one. Because now we want them to open when we click on them and we also want to persist the state in local storage. So when we reload this one next time, as you can see now, it will scramble it, it will shuffle it. And that's no good if we already have a calendar that we started to open, we want to persist it somehow. So we won't wipe it out when we reload it. First, we can finish our handle flip function here. Can remove that console log, recreate the const and call that one updated hatches. And we're simply going to map through all our hatches. So hatches.map, we have a hatch, an arrow function. Move this down there. And inside we can type our logic when we map it through, we are on each hatch here. So we have the hatch. We know that we have our ID property in our hatch object. So our hatch ID, we check if that one is equal to the ID that we send in, then we know that we're on the hatch that we clicked. If we're on that one, we're just going to spread the hatch inside of these curly braces. We create a new object for this one. Of course, we never mutate the state when we're in React. So this will give us the complete object and then we can change the open property. And we just, and we just have an exclamation mark and hatch.open and this one will revert it. So if it's on true, it will be false. And if it's on false, it will be true. All right, otherwise we can just return the object as it is because we won't change it. So this way we can flip the open property between true and false. And then we just set hatches that's our state up here, the setup function for that one with our updated hatches. But as you can see, we have a working calendar, but it's no good because it will wipe out the state when we reload it. So we will put it in local storage, as I said, to persist the state, to persist our calendar. Okay. Back inside of the app.js component. We're going to use local storage to persist our calendar. And we can go just below our state here. We create the use effect. An inline arrow function for that one. And I'm going to create the turner operator here. You could use an if statement also if you want to do that. Const calendar. From the local storage, I check if I have a property that's called calendar that we're going to set. If it finds that one, I just json.parse the local storage.calendar. 
that means that we have something in the local storage. Otherwise, we just call create calendar. That's the one we called up here and imported here. And then I set hatches with the calendar. We're also going to have a dependency array on this one and it's going to be empty because we're just doing this when we start up the application. Make sure that it still works, yes. Now it will always return a new one here. No, it actually won't because I already had something in my local storage. So it will return that one. So if we go inside of application, the local storage, I delete this one. And as you can see, it creates a new one every time now. Then that's because we're not setting anything in the local storage. And we can do that with another use effect. So use effect, an inline function. And just as before, you can use an if statement here if you want. First, we want to check the hatches.length. We want to check that we actually have something to store in the local storage. And if we have, we set the local storage. This is a short circuit I, I do here with this double ampersand. If this one is true, it will run this one. Otherwise, it will just do nothing. So local storage dot set item. I will call it calendar because that's the one we're checking for here. And then json.parse. No, not parse, json.stringify. And we have our hatches. Oh, that's a long row. Okay, save it. And as you can see, this one is saved in local storage. When we load, And you can see it persists it here, so that's great. Don't know why it's giving me another one here. Yeah, that's of course. I have to create this dependency array here and make this run every time the hatches changes. So when this change, it will run this use effect. Can make some comment here. Store calendar in local storage. All right, so this is it. As you can see, there's not much code to creating this calendar, and this should work now. I will just delete this, reload it. Oh, <laughs> it still won't give me the right calendar, why is it so? Yeah, and that's because I shouldn't call it up here. So remove this one, we're just giving it an empty array first, initially. So remove that one and give it an empty array, and now it should work. I reload it, yeah. It works, so that's great. So if you, for example, open uh, the hatch uh, three, that's today, and we should open the one and also number two. And you reload it and it persists the state and that's great. And you can see it's fully responsive also. That's how easy you create an advent calendar with React. And I think actually the styling was uh, kind of the most advanced part in this one to make this one flips so you can have an extra look at the CSS styling for this one if you feel unsure on how I did this. All right, see you in the next one.